Well, sometimes we don't have just volume changing and with pressure or just volume with temperatures. Sometimes all three of those things can change. So we can combine Boyle's law and Charles' law together into what is often called the combined gas law because it combines two gas laws. So here is a mathematical statement of the combined gas law. P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. This is assuming that the amount of gas is constant, that we're not putting more gas in or letting any gas out. And as with all gas problems, the temperature has to be in kelvins. So let's do an example with the combined gas law. Sample of gas has an initial volume of 158 milliliters at a pressure of 735 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. If the gas is compressed to a volume of 108 milliliters and heated to a temperature of 85 degrees Celsius, what is its final pressure in millimeters of mercury? Now this sound, kind of sounds like a riddle or something, right? There's all these numbers and what the heck does all that mean? This is where making a table really helps. So we'll put all this information into a table that'll sort it out and label it for us, and then we'll find the appropriate equation, and it's really not that bad. So we'll make our table. Get rid of that. We'll make our table. Um, we're going to have condition one, oops, pick something to write with, silly. Condition one, condition two. So the first number we come to, 158 milliliters. Okay, it says volume of, but the unit also tells us that's a volume. 158 milliliters at this pressure, those go together, so we want those on the same line, 735 millimeters of mercury, that's a pressure, and a temperature of 34 degrees Celsius. So those numbers all go together, that's the first set of conditions. Um, Celsius, got to convert it to Kelvin, just do it right away, plus 273, so that's 307 Kelvin. So it gives us that information about the gas, and then it's talking about compressing the gas. This is a change that's occurring. So now the numbers that come after this are going to be the second set of conditions. So the new volume is 108 milliliters. And it's heated to a temperature of 85. We want to make sure we get that in the temperature column and not in the pressure column. And again, change that to Kelvin's right away, 85 plus 273. 358. The question is asking what is the final pressure and that's the box that's empty so that's good. This is P2, that's what we're solving for. Any questions? Yes? Does it have to be in atmospheres? No it doesn't. It does not. Now when we get to the ideal gas law then which particular units we use are going to be more important. In Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, the Combined Gas Law, Avogadro's Law that we'll talk about, um, the units of pressure and volume don't matter as long as they agree with each other. So here we have both of our volumes in milliliters. If one was in liters and one was in milliliters, then we'd have a problem. We need to get them both the same but exactly what they are doesn't matter. So the, the equation we're going to use here is the combined gas law P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. Again with the fractions, 
cross multiply first. So I'm going to get um, P1, V1 times T2 being equal to T1, P2 times V2. You might say, well, why don't you just give us the equation that way? Because that's, that's not how they give it to students. Um, they always have the ones on one side and the twos on the other side, and that's how you end up with the fractions. There's a reason behind that that you're not going to care about. Um, but if you go looking these up anywhere else, you're going to see that fraction form, so we need to just learn how to deal with it. Cross multiply. Uh, we're looking for P2, so we want to isolate P2. That means we've got times T1 and times T2. We need to divide by those to get rid of them. So we'll divide by T1, we'll divide by V2. If you need help doing stuff like this, please come talk to me. It's one of those things that's so easy to screw up. Um, I hate for that to be the reason you get answers wrong on an exam. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this down carefully. P2 equals P1 V1 T2 over T1 V2. And now I'm going to go to my table and I'm going to find these values and put them into the equation. So pressure 1 is 735 millimeters of mercury. Write the units in here. Volume 1, 158 milliliters. Temperature 2 is 358 Kelvin. And that's divided by T1, uh, 307 Kelvin, and T2, no, V2, V2, um, 108 milliliters. And then check the units. Are units canceling out? Milliliters cancel, Kelvins cancel. The unit I have left is millimeters of mercury, a unit of pressure. This is a good sign. When you do this on your calculator, you need to be careful. There's a mistake that lots of students make. So we have 735 times 158 times 358. Divided by 307, most people are fine there. But then some of you are going to want to multiply by 108. If you do that without using parentheses, you're going to get the wrong answer. So if you don't already have it out, get your calculator out and do this calculation with me. 735 times 158 times 358 divided by... Now, if you're the kind of person that really wants to multiply, because those are next to each other, you need to do this. Let's try it this way with parentheses. So open the parentheses, 307 times 108, close the parentheses, and press equals or enter. And I'm getting 1256. It's really only three sig figs. Um, millimeters of mercury. Everybody get that answer? Now let's try it the other way. 735 times 158 times 358 divided by 307 divided by 108 equals. Get the same number? Did you divide by 108? Yeah, it is 1253.9, I There's like something wrong with my head this morning. It isn't even this morning anymore. Okay. But did you get the same answer doing it both ways? Now let's make the mistake and see what happens. So the mistake is 735 times 158 times 358 
divided by 307 times 108. That's the mistake. Um, 14 million. It's a little different, isn't it? What's happening when you're doing that? Let's see. How do you explain this? Is you're you're getting all of this, and then you're multiplying all of it by 108 instead of dividing. Okay, so that's a really common error. So I'm telling you about it so that you can watch out for it. Does anybody have any questions? I completely get that this looks like multiplying, and it is. But you have to learn how to communicate with your calculator. And if you want to put a time sign in there, then you have to tell it, I want you to, to divide by the quantity 307 times 108. And the way your calculator will understand that is if you use parentheses. If you have trouble with this, please come talk to me. So 1254 millimeters of mercury, um, if we were going to round that to the correct number of significant figures, we could say um, 1250 millimeters of mercury or 1.25 times 10 to the 3. Let's do another one. A balloon has a volume of 3.7 liters at a pressure of 1.1 atmospheres and a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. If the balloon is submerged in water to a depth where the pressure is 4.7 atmospheres and the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, what will its volume be? Assume that any changes in pressure caused by the skin of the balloon are negligible. That's like the fine print. Uh, balloons are a little bit tricky, but we're going to ignore the trickiness of them. So again, we're going to make a table to organize the information. Condition 1, condition 2. First number is 3.7 liters. So that's a volume. 3.7 liters at 1.1 atmospheres. That's a pressure and 30 degrees Celsius. What do we have to do to the temperature? Change to Kelvin. Plus 273 equals um, 303. The balloon is submerged in water. So we had a balloon. It's up here above the water. We've got the volume, the pressure, the temperature. Now we're going to take the balloon and we're going to stick it under the water. And here's our new pressure and our new temperature. So the pressure now is 4.7. I want to put that in the pressure column. 4.7 atmospheres. And 15 degrees Celsius. And so I need to change that to Kelvin, which I don't trust my head for, uh, 288. I have one blank. I'm going to call that V2. And again, we're going to use the combined gas law, P1, V1 over T1 equals... P2, V2 over T2. Cross multiply to get rid of the fraction. I need to solve for V2. I'm going to divide both sides by T1 and P2. I do that because the T1s cancel out and the P2s cancel out. I love it when they leaf blow during V2 equals P1 
B1, T2, over T1, P2. Okay, so P1, 1.1 atmospheres, V1, 3.7 liters, T2, 288 Kelvin. Divided by uh, the first temperature, 303 Kelvin, and the second pressure, 4.7 atmospheres. Look at the units. Atmospheres cancel atmospheres. Kelvins cancel Kelvins. If your units don't cancel out, then go back and look at your equation, check that you copied it correctly and all that stuff, because there's probably a mistake somewhere. Okay, so 1.1 times 3.7 times 288 divided by. Now, we're going to take a vote here. Do you want to use parentheses or divide by both? How many want divide with parentheses? How many want just divide both? I think the parentheses win. Okay, so we've got that. We're going to divide by, now open the parentheses, 303 times 4.7, close the parentheses. If you don't use the parentheses there and multiply, it'll be wrong. So this is coming out to be 0 0.823 um, and some other digits. And the unit is liters. How many sig figs should the answer have? Just two. 0 0.82 liters. Did I do it right? Any questions? <coughs> so I'm going to use the divide by with parentheses. If you don't like that, you can watch the YouTube videos from last fall when I did not do that. So there we go.